The current date is December 21st, 2022. An anomaly has appeared in the ionosphere above North America. Some have suggested it's a wormhole. Others think it's a Birkeland plasma current connected to a time loop. Either way, there is a slight possibility that if I can transmit an FM radio signal into the anomaly, that it could travel back in time to 2020, which was the last time we had a chance to alter the course of the future. I am hoping this message will get through, because if it doesn't, it will mean the end of humanity. I want you to know what happened in the past two years. August. The rioting that began in the spring of 2020 slowly increased over the summer. By the end of the summer, most of the stores in the inner cities had been looted and closed down. Looters began attacking trucks, and after three truck drivers were dragged from their cabs and murdered, the rest of the truckers went on strike and refused to deliver any more shipments to city stores. The lockdown had also by this time succeeded in driving almost every small family-owned business into bankruptcy. Malls and main streets throughout the country became ghost towns. The only retail stores that remained in operation were the big box stores that were located in the suburbs. There were six hour lineups to get in and the amount of items each person could purchase was severely limited. This meant that one person could not buy enough groceries for the family for a week and so had to return to the store every two days. By the end of the month, massive foreclosures came down on homes and businesses, throwing millions onto the streets. Every city park and empty lot became filled with homeless camps, while houses and storefronts remained boarded up by the banks. September. By early September, the people in the inner cities were starving, and the looting took on a feverish pitch. Heavily armed gangs spread out to the suburbs and went door to door, looting homes and murdering any remaining whites that had not already fled to the country. They even killed and ate the cats and dogs. The Marxist mayors of the cities told police to stand down and they refused to allow the National Guard in to stop the mayhem. After that, no more news came out of the newly created no-go zones. And on the hot, still nights of late summer, the sounds of screams and the echo of gunshots could be heard coming from the cities. First warning. And here is my first warning. Get out of the city. And if you can't, plan on a place where you can flee to before the end of summer. Retirement and senior care homes were locked down. No one was allowed to visit grandma or papa. A few people either broke in or snuck into the homes and they were shocked to discover the buildings completely empty. The next week, crowds of people stood outside the locked doors and demanded to see their relatives. The senior building administrators and staff were nowhere to be seen, and after several hours, the police arrived. They announced that all the seniors had been evacuated to a quarantine center, and because of social distancing, no one was allowed to know where they were. The same situation was occurring in the hospitals. They were empty. Where all the sick had been moved to, no one would say. This was the first time we heard the term quarantine center. There were some citizen reporters that set off to find the location of these quarantine centers and see for themselves. 
None were ever seen or heard from again. Second warning. This is my second warning. Under no circumstances allow yourself to be taken to a quarantine center. And if a friend or a relative is taken away, don't try to find them. They are gone. You will never see them again. In October of 2020, the government announced the third wave pandemic had arrived and that a worldwide lockdown more strict than anything before was being implemented. Any social interaction was forbidden. All stores and schools and public offices were closed. People had to do their grocery shopping online and the groceries dropped off three feet from the front door. Most people didn't get their groceries because the gangs from the inner city would follow the armored delivery trucks and steal the packages as they were dropped off. Many people by this time had come to realize that the first wave pandemic was a hoax. But this time, people really were dying by the thousands. Although it resembled a pandemic, these fatalities were not caused by a virus. They were caused by anthrax that was released into the water reservoirs. Any medical practitioner that tried to warn the public about the anthrax quickly disappeared. One by one, cities succumbed to the pandemic as each city's water supply was poisoned in turn. Third warning. By October, you should turn off the main water line into your home and use only distilled and purified water for drinking, cooking, and cleaning. With so many people dying from a real but unidentified disease, the governments of the world made vaccinations mandatory. What people didn't know was there were two types of vaccine. Vaccine A and Vaccine B. Before administrating the shot, the technician would check your social credit score. If you scored high and have been proven to be an obedient order follower, you would receive the A vaccine. However, if you have ever posted or commented the slightest doubt in the government propaganda, then you would receive the B vaccine. Those that got the B vaccine typically died in three to six weeks from some rare, fast-growing cancer. The governments established a snitch hotline and app, and soon everyone was informing on their friends, neighbors, and family. Then, every night could be heard the loud banging sounds of the UN security forces, most of whom could only speak Chinese. They rounded up the vaccine deniers and resistors and loaded them into trucks bound for the quarantine centers. Even people that had already received the vaccine were taken away because perhaps they had posted a comment on YouTube questioning the vaccine. At the same time, almost every writer, artist, musician, dancer, poet, and philosopher all disappeared presumably taken to the quarantine centers, but no one knew, and none were ever seen again. Fourth warning. This is my fourth warning. If you have ever in your life commented or liked any post or video that could be deemed anti-Marxist, communist, or if you own a firearm, then you need to disappear before November. The government knew that many whites had fled to family farms and cottages. There they had well water and so avoided the anthrax poisoning. These people were targeted next. First, all heating oil and propane deliveries were stopped. Then, just after Christmas, the temperatures dropped dramatically and the power was cut. Even those homes that did have a wood-burning stove weren't allowed to burn wood because of the carbon ban and the climate change laws. Drones with infrared cameras 
would scour the countryside at night, searching for the heat signature of a warm chimney. Anyone trying to heat their home would find the UN security forces at the door early the next morning, and everyone in the house would be taken away. So many people either starved or froze in the countryside that when the frozen bodies all thawed out in the spring, the smell of rotting flesh permeated the entire countryside. Fifth warning. If you live in northern climes, you will need to find alternative means of heating your home. Kerosene and propane heaters will be your best, if not only, option. Be sure to stockpile kerosene or propane. In November, the economy collapses. The destruction of every small business in the country, combined with massive unemployment, the crash of the real estate market, and the stratospheric debt all combined into the perfect storm of economic destruction. On Black Friday, the banks announced a temporary shutdown. Just before the closing bell the same day, the stock market crashed. The next Monday, the banks did not come back online, and all electronic services didn't work. No credit cards, debit cards, EBT cards, and no online banking. A state of emergency was called, and the election was cancelled until further notice. An emergency interim government was formed consisting of socialists and communists, who immediately declared martial law. With martial law, the government implemented their anti-hoarding laws, and soldiers with specially trained dogs went house to house, confiscating any food people may have stockpiled. Deprived of their own food supplies, everyone became dependent on government rations. Sixth warning. Get your money out of the stock market, pension plans, and banks, and convert the cash to gold and silver, if you still can, or to food, cigarettes, and bottles of spirits. These will be worth far more than their current cost once the dollar collapses. By January 2021, the lockdown and mass casualties had shut down food production. Several animal viruses like swine flu and mad cow disease swept through the country, wiping out almost all livestock. They also unleashed diseases into the deer, rabbit, and even squirrel populations so that not even hunting could provide untainted protein. Without fuel to run the combines, the crops couldn't be harvested, and even if you could, the trucking industry was closed down, so there would be no way of getting produce to market. The inner cities went quiet. They had either killed each other off, died from starvation, or from drinking the poisoned tap water. By the winter, there were no more stores. Only party members were able to buy groceries from the government website, but the rest of the country were left to their own devices. Many had already starved in the months previous, but the total shutdown that began on Christmas was devastating. The only way to buy food was to get another vaccine and a microchip implant. During the Great Famine, the world burned. First, arsonists set fire to the cities. In the countryside at night, you could see distant orange glows coming from a half dozen burning cities. Then the arsonists spread to the countryside, and barns and farmhouses were set ablaze. Even small towns were completely burned down. Then massive forest fires blanketed half the country. The smoke blotted out the sun and contributed to a mini ice age that destroyed crops with early frost and an extremely cold winter 
that followed. Power was intermittent, internet access limited to 30 minutes a day, if there was power, so reports were sketchy. China was starving, and so they invaded and occupied Australia and the entire west coast of North America from California to British Columbia. War broke out between India and Pakistan. Reports from Africa said that the famine was so severe that there was widespread cannibalism. The same held true south of the border and into South America. Everywhere the famine brought warlords and roving gangs preying on anyone who had any food left. The seventh and final warning. While the government and the poisoned water killed many people, the greatest killer was starvation. Everyone needs to have two years supply of food and stored in different locations. The current date is December 21st, 2022 and everyone I ever knew is dead. All the old folks like me and everyone over 40 who remembered what freedom was like are dead too. The only humans left are under 30, those who had been thoroughly indoctrinated in Marxist ideology and the party members that ran the show. They live in gated mini-cities where they are microchipped and vaccinated every month. A forest of 5G towers monitor and control their every movement and broadcast continuous propaganda directly into their skulls. A few of us managed to kidnap one of the city dwellers and bring him to the countryside, but once out of range of the 5G transmissions, he collapsed and went catatonic. A month later, without the regular vaccine, he died from massive organ failure. The people in the cities can never leave. Meanwhile, the countryside is dead. No people, no livestock, not even any wildlife. I survived this long because I'm very clever and I was prepared. I had a half dozen caches of supplies hidden within a 20 mile radius of where I knew I would be retreating to. Each cache had two months worth of food, some medical supplies and some ammo. I survived by squatting in abandoned buildings, homes and cottages, only going out at night and never spending more than a week in each location. Myself and several others had to resort to this strategy, but I lost contact with the others several months ago, and my time is near its end. I'm out of supplies. I can't get a vaccine and microchip because they automatically shoot anyone over 40. The winter is here, and while I might still be able to shoot a squirrel or two, or catch a few fish, the odds of an old man trudging through the snow in freezing temperatures to hunt squirrel. Well, I won't kid myself on what the odds are I'd make it through winter. This is why I need to get this message to you. Even if you heed all my warnings, there is little chance of you surviving. That is why you must stop it from happening in the first place. You don't have much time left. Do something now. Fight back. If you don't, there will not be a future.